fighting. To some, it is the most exciting part of hockey. But to others, it opens up a window into the dark side of hockey. Concussions, head injuries, and even death, as the Sanderson family knows all too well. I'm Darren Matt, bringing you the story of how one player's tragedy could change the face of hockey as we know it. Don Sanderson, age 21, would do whatever it took to win the game, whether it be delivering the big hit or a fight. Sanderson died January 2nd from injuries that occurred when he hit his head after falling to the ice during a fight on December 12th. His father, Michael, coaches a girls' midget team in Belleville. He remembers what he thought when he first heard the news. Well, it's really, uh, what it was was didn't think it was as serious as it was or anything else. All it was was the hospital phoned us and just said, your son's injured. Uh, he's had a sustained a head injury. Um, they, uh, he was in Brantford Hospital, and they were transferring to Hamilton Hospital. And uh, I just uh, got in my car at 1.30 in the morning, drove to Hamilton, thinking that uh, all I was going to do is deal with a major concussion or something else. Little, you, know, you, don't, you don't think of anything. They don't tell you anything that's how serious or anything any is. Former NHLer Alan McCauley has seen his fair share of fights and head injuries. Now, as an assistant coach at Queen's University, he realizes the importance of dealing with them properly. Only once this year has it come up, but a concussion with one of our players and, and just trying to you know, help him make the, the, the smart, uh, safe choices you know, for him as a person. Don't worry about uh, hockey. Uh, if you don't make the, the right choices, you won't get to enjoy this game for, uh, for the length of time that he, I'm sure he'd like to. Head injuries have even become a point of study for some like Dr. Fraser Saunders, who studies them at Queen's University. He explains the dangers of rushing back too soon from a concussion. Well, the danger in the first couple of weeks, certainly, is that your reflexes are slow and you get hurt again. Maybe your knee or your shoulder or something else, but you think you're reacting as quickly as you thought you were, but you're not. So a second injury becomes paramount in those first couple of weeks. There's a very rare type of brain swelling that can occur, or some people claim that occurs, that can even result in death. After a concussion, nobody goes back before a week, 10 days anyway. And then it's symptom related. You go back and you, you one, you wait till all symptoms are gone, then you can do non-contact stuff, and if the symptoms are, are not there, then you can progress up the line to back to competing. Some people, like Michael Sanderson, have ideas on how to limit injuries caused by fighting. Well, you're not going to change fighting in hockey. You've got, you've got a sport that's very high tempo. You have a sport that's dealing with emotion, contact. Um, you're not going to take fighting out of hockey. What you can do is change the rules to make fighting in hockey almost to the point that there's um, it becomes ridiculous or silly to fight or, or that you're going to pay a huge price to fight and you'll find the fighting will drop very, very seriously. Some leagues have already started to make changes, such as the OHL, which has made it so that if a player removes his helmet or chin strap before or during an altercation, he receives a one-game suspension. This rule is a step in the right direction, yet Michael believes it's also a liability issue. It's a step, okay? It's a, it's a step. And we all know that the rules had to change. And let's face it, the only reason why they're bringing these rules in now is not to change the fact about uh, the game. What they're dealing with here is a liability issue. Whether it is a step forward or not, nothing will bring back Dawn. And all that is left now are the memories. Every year we took a sports trip. You know, one year we'd go to the Grey Cup, him and I, or we'd go to a Leaf Montreal game in Montreal or an Ottawa Toronto game, just an overnighter and just father-son just uh, doing what you want to do. The issue of fighting in hockey has always seemed to be a hot topic, but now because of the Sanderson story, it has really heated up. There's no doubt that measures have to be taken to prevent this from happening again. We've seen that some leagues, like the OHL, have made changes and taken steps in the right direction. As for the NHL, Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly was recently quoted as saying that fighting will be on the agenda for the upcoming general managers meetings in March. For the Sportswire, I'm Darren Matt. Stay tuned. After the break, I'll be joined by Brad Cochimilio, Emmett Davis, and Greg Warren to discuss the good and the bad of professional all-star games.